views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests and not necessarily those of the staff and management of WWDB-TV. Whether she's walking the red carpet or doing interviews, you'll find her with celebrities and all the latest news. She's here, she's there, she's everywhere, she's always on the go. So sit back, relax, and get ready. This is the Corey Taylor Talk. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to Corey Taylor Talks Live from Las Vegas, the number one teen talk show. As you can see, I am wearing my Golden Knights shirt. Even though they lost their first playoff game, that's okay. I, we're still rooting for them. There's plenty of more to go, so we are still rooting for our Knights um, and whatever with the Sharks. So we're go, go Knights. <laughs> and, uh, and today we actually have Lyric Duby, who we have had on years ago. Actually, he's one of my very first guests. And um, since then, we have both grown so much. And he is just doing some amazing stuff. And he has so exciting things coming. And um, I, it was so good to hear from him. So I'm so excited to share it with you guys. Uh, so once again, we have Mr. Lyric Duby. So hi, Lyric. How are you? Doing fantastic. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for being on and reaching out. It's oh, so good to hear from you me. again. Yes. Yeah, it's been a super long time. I know. It's been, gosh, probably almost five years now. So crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, but uh, so why don't we get right into it? Um, now, like I said, it was years ago since you've been on. So um, for some people who might not know who you are or what you do, um, can you kind of introduce yourself a little bit and um t because you are truly so busy and you are always doing so much but that's awesome um so can you just explain uh who you are and what you do of course so i'm a singer songwriter guitarist uh based out of ontario canada and i've been up to a whole bunch i tour a lot i'm a recording artist so i'm constantly in the studio and when i'm not in the studio i'm usually playing gigs there you go. <laughs> and like I said, you just have so many things. You have uh, your new album that's coming out, and you released two new singles, um, which I believe we're going to listen on um, in a little bit later in the song. But uh, like I said, just so many things. Why don't we talk about uh, Bermuda? Because that's your next thing that's coming up, right? You're going to Bermuda for three months? Of course, yeah. So actually, that's what I've been doing all the last couple of days. I'm trying to get together a nice hefty set list. I have a residency down in Hamilton, Bermuda. We're playing for a couple of venues and bars and clubs downtown. And uh, we're doing that about five nights a week. So we'll have club nights, duo nights, acoustic nights, the whole nine yards. It should be a good run. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, that that is so cool. First of all, I think everyone would love to go to Bermuda, never mind perform there and actually have a residency. I'm That is really amazing. How did that even come about? Uh, a mutual friend of mine, musician, was uh, originally offered the job or offered the audition, and the guy was looking for a younger artist to come in and play the venue because he's last band, they were in their 60s, had been there for about seven years, so he wanted to change it up and get some people that are in their 20s and 30s. So the gig, gig came along, and it was uh, specifically looking for a duo act. So the, uh, the musician I'm playing with name is Justin Bell. He's a Toronto local. He's been playing up the scene for quite some time as a drummer and singer-songwriter. So we got together, figured out a solid duo set, and uh, knocked out the edition. It went fantastic. And then here you are, and it's going, and you're going there. I mean, that is really just amazing. I'm sure it'll be absolutely beautiful there. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Yes, and you have been working for years, and you're, you work so hard, and I think that's amazing. And I think that's why you have been so successful, um, and you're so talented, too, of course. But, I mean, you're also oh, an amazingly you. hard worker. I mean, you, how old were you when you actually got into music and started it? I started playing music when I was about nine years old. Uh, I got my first guitar right around then, and I recorded my first album when I was 11, released when I was 12. Uh, most so, uh, more so the keepsake at the time wasn't really having the mind to, you know, become a professional musician. And then right after the release had a fantastic turnout, so I decided to write and record a second record at 14. And it was on that release party. We completely sold out and overfilled the venue, and it was north of 300 people, I believe. And that was when we decided, like, oh, like this is definitely something I want to pursue. And then I started studying guitar study much more seriously, studying jazz, classical. And got into the bulk of, I guess, what has brought me to where I am today. 
Yeah, and I was actually uh, going to ask a little bit about that. What's cool is you're into many different genres. Um, what what type of genres uh, do you play and do you write, and uh, and which ones are your favorites, or do you have one that's really your heart, or do you kind of enjoy all of them? Uh, every genre definitely has its own pull and its own direction. I mean, I very much so started off on rock and blues. That was my origin. I think most guitarist players as it is. Right. Uh, I dubbed myself Revolution Rock. As, uh, my earlier albums were very... There's definitely, you can hear the inspiration from a lot of different genres. Not as much jazz back then, but definitely the rock and blues. And these days I found myself playing a lot of funk. I still study jazz and classical, so I don't perform classical as much as I would jazz. I play in some trios. I play in show tune bands. Uh, overall favorite, it's got to be funk. There's just something about it. It just really gets me, and who doesn't love funk music? I mean, it's always a good time. Of course. <laughs> well, no, honestly, all your all of your music is really great, and I think uh, that's what's so cool. It's such a variety, and people can really relate to it. And you're so talented. Your voice is amazing. You're an incredible guitar player. I mean, Really, you should be so proud of yourself. And like I said, you you're you were so young when you started, and you've just grown so so much, and you're doing so much uh, with your career. And I think that's really an an incredible thing you should be proud of. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. Yes, and and so kind of speaking with that, what is like your ultimate goal with your career? What what or what are you really reaching towards? Because I know you already have uh, five albums. I mean, I, you just have done so much. It's really amazing. You're only 21, correct? Yep. That, that's amazing. It's five songs, five albums out. That's really unheard of. Um, so what's kind of your ultimate goal with that? Oh, this is definitely a big question. It's asked on and off again. Uh, my number one goal, to keep, it, uh, to keep it simple and short, is I want to play music for the rest of my life. That's always been my number one goal, and I think it always will be. Uh, second to that, there's obviously things I'd like to achieve in music, uh, stages I'd like to play, places I'd like to go, uh, countries I'd like to tour. Uh, I definitely want to get back out to Europe again. I've had the great privilege of actually backpacking Europe when I was still in school, wow. and it was I just enjoyed the experience so much. So after I kind of got a I got the travel bug for sure. I ended up touring. We did Japan. We did China. Uh, it's on my bucket list. I definitely need to go back to Asia. That's very, very high on my priority list. Can't wait to hit up Germany for the first time uh, as, as a touring artist, another one that I really want to see. And uh, I just want to be touring and playing music my whole life. In short, recording albums is what I love to do. Yeah. I do play for other people as well. As, like, I'm a session player, so that's where some my income does come from. Right. So it's uh, music. Everything that has to do with music is tends to be where my heart lies. Yeah, it's really, it, you could tell it's really your whole life and uh, what you love. And that's that's a great thing, too, that you are so passionate about it and you actually absolutely love it. So that's a great thing. And mm-hmm. and like you said, you have toured so many places across the world. Do you have one that's really your favorite or maybe even like your favorite venue you've ever done or like the coolest one that you've ever done or who you performed with? I definitely say my favorite uh, country to tour would have been Japan. The crowds are fantastic. They love the music. We had a great response. Uh, other than that, for venues, though, the number of venues I've played, it's been a ton. Yes. I do really, really enjoy a lot of my local venues. Like, i got to pay tribute to the places I grew up in, places like uh, all of these played down in St. Catherine so much. I played in Toronto a lot, the local Toronto bars, the Toronto scene, even up in Barrie, where, where I grew up. It's uh, There's so many, this longer than my arm, honestly. I feel bad I'd miss so many people. But uh, for all the people and yeah. uh, the venues that I know and I've played with and I continue to play at, I love you guys. You're the best. Well, that's awesome. And and I'm sure every show and everything has its own unique thing. So I'm sure all of them are awesome for you. <laughs> Very much so, yeah. And so you, like you said, you're from Canada. What part of Canada are you actually from? So I'm actually a little north of Toronto. So I used I grew up in the Vinbury for the first uh, 18, 19 years of my life. And then I just recently moved to Aurelia, which is farther north, kind of the wrong direction, so if you're trying to be a musician. But uh, we moved to Aurelia, and I built a studio, and that's wow. where I'm at right now. Uh, it's a little, little quieter, definitely more out in the country, which is where my heart is, despite my frequent trips and commutes to the city, which I despise, but yeah, <laughs> we're, we're well worthy sacrifice. Oh, yes. Well, no, I, I think that's cool, too, because uh, you have been so successful. And, of course, um, Canada has had so many incredible artists. I mean, Drake, Justin Bieber. I mean, so many amazing people came from there. But uh, it's not 
it's it is farther away and mostly when you think of artists and everything you think of America so I think that's cool that you have been so successful with Canada and you're making you're making things out of Canada I mean that's really awesome and uh, unique about you for sure yeah Canada has a lot of hidden gems that I think fly under the radar but it's uh it's got its own little community and once you work in it understand it a bit it really shines yeah, and, and so you, you're you're honoring Canada still, and that's still a great place for you to go, so that's awesome. And I, are you into hockey, actually? Speaking of which, now that we're talking about Canada and the playoffs, I, I know Canadians usually are very much into hockey. Are you into hockey at all? Usually Canadians are. Unfortunately, I am not. <laughs> I never got into the sport, and I actually, we had TV. I was a really little kid, and I never watched it, so... The family canceled TV, and I never watch TV. I just play guitar. <laughs> well, there you go. No, that's cool. I was just, I was just thinking because of the nights, and I was saying in the beginning, but I, I think that's cool. I never was into hockey until we got them, so I do understand what you're saying for sure. <laughs> but, 100%. <laughs> yes. And um, – Actually, you know what, I think because we do have a couple of your songs that we're playing, so I'm, I'm trying to pull up the songs uh, that we're going to play, but why don't we talk a little bit about uh, your album, your fifth album. Um, what was the inspiration with that? And uh, and and I know you took kind of a break for a little bit with, uh, with your albums, and so what was your inspiration with getting this one out and doing this one? So originally I had albums one, two, three, and four, uh, three was a delayed release released at the same time as four, Combat Love and uh, Black Ice. Uh, the fifth album was originally supposed to follow right after that, but I had just signed the Mandarin and there was talk of a label deal in the works. So we decided to push it off and wait for a little bit. And obviously when you wait, you write new material. And then every time we'd wait, I'd say, oh, well, you know, let's replace these songs and add these songs and redo that part of the song. And it became this endless cycle of just, as I evolved as a musician and as I grew up, my tastes and views and music changed. So it ended up kind of transferring. This is to, to we call it when we refer like to the even my management team and everyone else who works with me. We call this the seventh album because I actually do this <laughs> would, would be the seventh album if I had released everything along the way. Right. But it's uh, this was a big, big process of growing. So when it releases, you'll hear stuff that's all the way from the time I was, you know, 16, writing Combat of Love, songs that we were said, oh, well, you know, it's a good song, but it doesn't fit with this album, so we, we'll save it for the next one, or we'll save it for a project in the future. Yeah. So it's a, this, this uh, I guess, record will be a huge variety and compilation of my musical progress through the ages of 16 all the way to 21. Uh, now, I have to say, I think songwriters are incredible. Like, they're so crazy talented. And I, when I was really little, I was like, oh, I want to be a songwriter. And then I realized quickly that was never going to happen for me. Um, so where do you actually, like, pull your inspiration from with writing? And what's, what's kind of your writing process? And how long does it take to complete a song for you? Uh, definitely varies per song and both how long it takes and what my writing process is. Um, it's changed, especially now that I have a studio, and it used to be very much so based around a melody or a chord structure that, that had caught my attention, caught my eye, and then I would write based on either, you know, life experience. I'm a huge reader, so books a lot of times, I gather inspiration from that, and a lot of times even in the songs, not necessarily the song itself, but the mood and the emotion that it portrays, and it's something that can trigger another feeling within yourself that eventually a song comes out of. Uh, like I said, since having the studio, I have been able to record a lot more. I do a lot of, almost all my demos at my house and a lot of tracking. So that has opened up doors astronomically. I've been pro I've probably doubled the amount of songs I write wow. in uh, when I go on the writing grind. Just because I have the resources to get everything down in such a timely fashion and get into some production, which as you, as most musicians will know, who work in a studio recording their own stuff, if you're part of the production process, usually it sparks another idea for another song and it's just, it's a big domino effect. Uh, if one thing just leads to another, which leads to another. Average time for writing a song, I would have to say, I'd put them into two categories. One is they usually happen within a day to a week, uh, just something that's been going on. And then I have the songs that I've been working on continuously for three years. Oh, wow. <laughs> and there are quite a few of them, unfinished songs. I have a lot of all the releases planned in the future, which is getting a bit ahead of myself because the fifth album isn't quite released yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as it goes with the creative process, there's no, uh, can't really put a timeline on it, unfortunately. I wish you could, but 
as it goes. No, I understand, and I, I think that's cool that, uh, I, I mean, yeah, I understand. It can take a day, a week, or, or years. I mean, that's really interesting uh, to see the writing process. I think it's always uh, cool to learn how different people do it because I just have so much respect for you guys. I could never, ever, ever oh, do you. it. So I think that's really phenomenal you guys are able to do that. And it's just, I think it's just a big factor of being able to, you know, just leave the – the ego, leave the, you know, the thoughts of the critical thoughts saying, oh, this isn't good because of this, and I don't like this because of this, and just write, write organically, and then go back and edit it. That seems to be my process, and I found that for coming up with the, the songs, I, I call it the flow, the flow is the best, that works the best in the songs, and I think that's why the fifth album will be so unique, and that you're going to have that process as it evolved over the three, four years that it took to write the album. Gotcha. And and speaking of that, I, we did want to play uh, two songs, if that was okay with you. I was uh, going to play Black Home, or Back Home and Should Have Went Home. Um, of course. So can you explain uh, what those ones are about and and um, and how uh, maybe your writing process with that or how you release them? Well, certainly. Uh, so Back Home was originally that was the title track of what would have been the fifth album. Uh, it was written specifically for kids, the back home sound, I was very, like I said, my roots are in rock and blues. That's where I grew up. That's where I cut my teeth. That's where I learned how to play guitar. So it was, it's a true, tried and true, driving rock song, hard hitting. And it tells a story of, from two aspects of two different people. Uh, the, the first being a musician who's made it. He's the big star. He's the best there is. And he's finally coming home to a small town after years of being away. So it's his first time back, and his kind of, I guess, light journey on that and how people perceive him. The second is written from a more, much more personal perspective, where it's a female singer who's basically very, um, we'll say extroverted, to be polite. Uh, she's saying that she's the best singer you've ever heard in your life. And there's no, there's no she's essentially the starting where the big star started, and she's trying to get there. Basically chasing steps, but not in uh, direct relation. It's just kind of a... Going back home. Uh, you know, Eric. I think uh, I think we're breaking up a little bit. Uh, can you can you hear us? Okay. Yep, I can hear you fine there. Okay. All right. Yeah. We you just faded out a little bit, so I just wanted to make sure. Okay. All right. Cool. I think we're good now. <laughs> oh, right. Not a problem. Yeah. Uh, the second song, "Should Run Home," is much a little more. Well, it's a much newer song for sure. I wrote it when I was, I believe, 19, 20 in that range. And it's uh, really from a uh, semi personal experience. It's a little, little self explanatory. If you do want to get up the listeners, give it a listen. A little bit more uh, adult content, we'll say. But it's about waking up and uh, probably having a few too many drinks and going home when you probably shouldn't have gone home with someone. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's a good time. It was uh, all written in good fun. And it was, I think it definitely brings out the funk side of my playing, which is you can hear where I take heavy inspiration from. And originally written on acoustic, actually, and then brought to a full band arrangement, which is usually the way it goes, but I find uh, there's a good majority of my music that's also written on electric, specifically for a band. So it's a good uh, in-between of the two, and you can kind of hear, it's a very good, actually, summary of the, I guess, my playing as a whole. It's, I guess that's the way I would describe it, but yeah. Very cool. All right. So uh, we're actually going to play them right now. Uh, so here we go. The first one will be back home and the second one is should have went home. So here we go from Lyric to Down south, rock and roll, his blood cigarette in his mouth. The wooden strings became a part of his soul. He said he plays like fire, going out of control. The small town shows, he sounds like a ringer. Your typical Hollywood guitar gunslinger. Walks in the bars to steal the show, and then he walks out with all your pride and toe. Hey, you gonna be a big star someday. Driving down the highway. i 
in town She invited me to drink and said sit down Got a story to tell and it's on me The best dance singing as you'll ever see So mark my words, remember my name Well I got no pride cause I got no shame I had nothing to start so I got nothing to lose Nothing to stop me from singing the blues Hey, gonna be a big star someday Driving down the highway back home No, nobody's gonna steal that show Because everybody knows you're coming Back home everybody and welcome back to Corey Taylor Talks. Once again we have Mr. Lyric Doobie with us and you probably are a little confused. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical mix-up uh, but that was Back Home that you did just watch and uh, should have went home. We had the music for it but we didn't have the video so I believe we didn't play it uh, so that's why you're a little confused but you can go to his website and check that out. Uh, so thank you for sticking around and uh, that was an awesome video lyric so uh, Back Home a really cool song and you know what I I think so different about you too is um the, of course there's many artists that do but all your songs really have like a whole story to it and I think that's something that's missing a lot of times now it was very much so uh, directed at the story aspect so I'm really happy that I was able to incorporate that in and let it come across in the song yeah, and I, I really think it was phenomenal, and you did a great job with that. And, oh, thank you. Yeah, and like I said, I really, I'm a huge fan of all your music, and I think anyone that's listening to you maybe just now and just discovering yourself now, I, I think everyone can kind of relate to your music, and uh, you, have a, you have great music out there, so I think that's really cool, and like I said, so successful. And um, I'm so happy uh, the fifth album is uh, finally coming out and it's finally here. Yes, thanks so much, Jim. Like, yeah, again, it's a big thing off our shoulders for sure. Oh, <laughs> Long yeah. time coming, and we're super, super pleased with the turnout. Yeah, and and like I said, you've been working so hard your whole life, and um, and so what can we expect next? So I know, like we said, you're doing Bermuda for three months, um, and then after that, what are you what are you planning on doing then after that? So after and maybe even while in Bermuda, I do have another EP. And the uh -huh. EP will definitely be a step in a new direction with a very specific sound. This will be the first, uh, I guess, album that I have produced myself. So I had another producer come in and help with the final recording aspect. The same guy who actually does my first album, second album, part of the third, and then part of the fifth as well. 
His name's Jeff Wardell at Your Productions. We've been working together for a really long time, and we have a it's a really good really good connection in the studio, and I think they're extremely efficient, and we always never we never seem to butt heads. It's always a, a, a productive session. So this album or this EP was entirely produced by me in my studio, and then I brought it to him for the remix, remaster, and some re-recording of some parts, and of course to get some of Jeff's tasty ideas in there because wouldn't be able to do a record without a little sprinkle of producer. There you go. So very cool. So then an EP. Oh my goodness. So you took the while to release the album, but now you're just releasing music left and right. It seems like. <laughs> and actually, on the tail of the EP, I am planning to release an acoustic album as well. Nothing has been announced for that yet, but it's uh, been in the writing works for probably longer than the fifth album. It's uh, something I've always wanted to do, and now that I finally have the resources, and hopefully the time when I get back from Bermuda, I can really cut down the grind and get on that. It's been a, a definitely a career-long dream to release a proper acoustic album, as it's uh, something that I've always had half a heart to. There you go, and now it's finally happening. Very cool. And yeah, uh, we're so. getting kind of towards the end of our show. We still have plenty of more. And uh, I, in a little bit, I'm going to ask you some five random questions just so people get to know you a little bit better. But um, before we do that, why don't you tell people where they can actually keep up to date with you and follow you? And um, because I, I'm sure and listen to your music, obviously, because I'm sure everyone would like to support you after this. Of course. Uh, so you can go to our website, which is www lyricdoobie.com that's L-Y-R-I-C-D-U-B-E-E -E. all my apps are at lyricdoobie nice and easy Instagram, Twitter, Facebook you name it I'm out there so come on in check out the music drop a line say hi I don't mind at all I'm looking forward to hearing from everybody okay and you have a perfect name too I mean that can have been any better <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I gotta thank my parents for that one. There you go. And uh, so, okay, so like I said, we do want to ask you five random questions just to get to know you a little better. Bruce, so are you up to it? A hundred percent. Okay. So, if you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be and why? It would be. Oh man, this is a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to say it would be with Jared Leto. Oh. Uh, he was my biggest inspiration as a vocalist, and Thirty Seconds to Mars was my favorite band for years. I've seen them three times live every time they come to town, and I think he's just an amazing person. I love his him as an actor. I love him as a vocalist and as a band leader. I think the music they write is fantastic. It, a lot of it puts across a good message, and a lot of it really strikes home. And with his vocal style and the production style, really helped influence and shape my sound. Well, there you go. That's that's pretty good. And then um, this is it's. I you might be the same answer. Uh, so if it is, that's okay. But if not, that's fine. Um, so if you could sing a duet with anyone, who would it be? Uh, I'd be a little scared to sing with Jared, but always be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would love to sing a duet with Sarah Bareilles. Actually, she oh, really? wrote my favorite pop album, uh, Little Voice, Little Voices. Um, yeah, I have listened to a lot of music, of course, as I play a lot of music. Um, most of what I listen to tends to be you know, prog, jazz, some metal, and some funk. But uh, one of the few like piano pop albums that like really, really resonated with me was uh, Sarah Burrell's. They're actually the same album that has Love Song, which is ironically like one of my least favorite songs in the album. Still a fantastic <laughs> song, but uh, I would love to do a duet with her. I think her voice is absolutely fantastic, and she's an unbelievable composer. Yeah, no, she's phenomenal, and uh, she's done so much. Yeah, so that's a great answer. And um, this one, it's very tough. I, a lot of people cannot answer it, so if you can't, that's fine. But what's the best no you've ever been given? What's the best uh, advice I've been given? Best no. So the best, best no. No. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, the best no I've ever been given. Actually, I do know. Uh, my guitar teacher, uh, I'd asked him to teach me a song that I wasn't ready for. And I'd also, it was kind of right around the same time, I was in the middle of studying for classical at the time, and I'd asked him to help me out with a uh, list that I was doing. And so two, two different things at the same time, and he said no to both of them back to back, and I couldn't understand why he didn't want me to, like, why wouldn't you help me with this song? Like, you have all the knowledge in the world, and you're not going to help, like, I'm, I'm taking lessons with this guy five days a week for the last ten years, like, you know what I mean? He's... I, just, I couldn't understand it. And then when I, he said, you're going to go lift it yourself. And after lifting it myself, it opened up a new 
skill set that I guess I had been trained for in lifting and composing and doing stuff like film scores uh, that I really never bothered to tap into outside of the classical world. And when I finally wanted to bring it into a contemporary sense, I was, like I said, I was forced to use the tools that I was given, and it made me understand and realize so much more about music that I never thought I would. Well, there you go. See, I, I think that's great you're able to answer it, and that's a perfect answer, too. I have never been able to answer it, so I think that's great that you know exactly what it is, and that's true. I, that is a great now. <laughs> I love Yeah, sometimes you gotta, you got to be throwing out your feet every now and then to stand for yourself to really figure something out, and I'm uh, really thankful for that, that there's people in my life that are not only supportive enough, to, but honest enough to say, you know what, you need to do this yourself, right. <laughs> and it's really helped me. No, and that's important, and uh, he obviously believed in you enough, so that's that's good. And then, what is your favorite song you ever wrote? So I know you have so many songs, and probably some that aren't released, but, so out of all of them, what's your favorite one that you've actually ever written? Uh, my favorite one is actually the one that I struggle with the most. Uh, not struggle to write, but struggle to release. I've recorded it about four times. I've never been happy with it. Uh, just, I don't think there's something that can catch the essence. And it's also the song that means most to me. It's called Carry Me. And I'm extremely happy to say that it will be on the fifth album. Oh, cool. And it will also be an acoustic version, one take live off the floor on the acoustic album when it eventually comes out. Oh, awesome. Yes. Very Actually, I wrote that song in Las Vegas. It started out as a seven-minute instrumental and then turned into Holy a four-minute pop song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's cool. That so it's finally coming out, and uh, wow, good for you. So that's awesome. That's I'm excited to hear it. I'm sure everyone is. Yeah, thank you. And then what? The last question is: What's something that no one knows about you? Something no one knows about me. <laughs> Difficult one. I'm a very open person. I really don't have secrets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> those who aren't around me all the time, I am. If you talk to me for longer than about 15 minutes, I am utterly obsessed with cars, and it's going to come out at some point. So I don't, I'd say no one knows that about me. I think everybody knows it about me. But <laughs> for those listening down in Vegas, I'm extremely envious of you guys. You have beautiful weather all the time, or beautiful for cars, and no salt on the road, and beautiful classics and builds. It's definitely been always half of my mom, like, hey, I should move to Vegas. And I'm like, oh, it's for the music scene. And half of me is like, yeah, you just want to go there for the cars. And I'm like, yeah, okay, you're kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I love fitness, cars, music. Uh, that pretty much sums me up uh, in the entirety, i got to say. There you go. And what's your favorite uh, car? Uh, favorite car? Uh, that's another really, really, really tough one. <laughs> I'm just going to go safe and say it's my car. I only drive a 66 by 880 player to the hard top, so... Oh, wow. I'll say it's my favorite car for now. There you um, go. It always evolves and changes, but that definitely has a special place in my heart as it was my first car. Then there you go. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lyric. Uh, it was so good having you on again. Uh, once again, why don't we go over uh, your website and where people can keep up to date with you? Of course. It's www.lyricdoobie.com. That's L-Y-R-I-C-D-U-B-E-E. -E. And I'm on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whole nine yards, just at Lyric Doobie. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lyric, for being on. It was so great talking to you again. And I, I hopefully when, uh, when you release your EP, I would love to have you on again, too. Well, certainly. Thank you so much for having me. really appreciate your time. Thank you. And have fun in Bermuda. <laughs> I will. Cheers. <laughs> Bye. And that was Mr. Lyric Duby. What a great guy. Um, like I said, I, I think it was probably about five years ago when we had him on last. So that's crazy. He was, when I, he was probably like, my 15th guest or so like forever ago so he was from the beginning and now uh he's doing so much and uh we're so proud of him here and uh, he's accomplished so much so it was great having him please go check out his website keep up to date with him check out his album um he, he's just so amazingly talented and his music's great so please uh, go check him out and thank you guys so so much for watching and remember never give up always believe and you'll achieve thank you and god bless